from Valley's Park Place here in Atlantic City, New Jersey as Garden State Boxing and Budweiser, the king of beers, in association with Valley's Park Place, proudly present this afternoon's big IBF featherweight championship of the world and is approved by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. The Honorable Larry Hazard, Senior Commissioner, the Honorable Jerry Gormley, Chairman, Members of the board, Gary Shaw and Al Daniel Sr. The chief physician in attendance of Inside this afternoon is Dr. Frank D. Doggett, along with Dr. Charles E. Wilson and Dr. Dominic F. Coletta, Jr. Our judges, Frank Brunette, Al DeVito, and John Stewart. The timekeeper to bell is Earl Curry. Counting for the knockdown seconds, alternate referee Lindsay Page. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 12 round IBF featherweight championship bout, referee Rudy Battle. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the red corner, wearing the red trunks with the green and white trim. He weighed in at an even 125 pounds. This young man has a heck of a record, 49 wins, only five losses with 23 big knockouts. The former IBF featherweight champion of the world, here is the challenger, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome aboard Manuel Mantecas Medina. Medina. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with the black and red trim. He tipped in at 125 and three quarter pounds. His record has 37 wins, only two losses, one draw, with 23 knockouts. From the Motor City of Detroit, ladies and gentlemen, here is the IVF featherweight champion of the world, Tom Boom Boom Johnson. Johnson. Okay, gentlemen, you've both received your pre-fight instructions. I expect a clean break at all times. Let's have a nice clean contest. Touch gloves. Come out at the bell. Thank you. Scheduled for 12 rounds. Round one for the International Boxing Federation Featherweight Championship. In defense, the man in the white trunks with a black trim, Boom Boom Johnson, and his challenger in the red trunks and green trim, Manuel Medina, who held that title way back. The first time these fellas met, the fight was stopped when a headbutt caused a cut on Medina's, Medina's eyes, and uh, so it was a technical draw. And then they met again in France in February 93, and victory for Johnson. Funny, I've seen uh, Adina fight before, and, and he is crafty. He moves in and out, takes a punch well. So I've never seen him, but... Uh, I've noticed that Boom Boom has improved ever since he became world champion. You know, the first time he had lost on that, uh, with that technical draw, his whole attitude changed. You know, I see him around in New York, he had a whole, lot, a whole different outlook on everything. And I guess that's what made him world champion the second time. He's been a pro for eight years, Adina 10 years. Adina, 49 and 5, won the IBF title in August of 91. And in his fifth defense, he lost it to Boom Boom Johnson. But he only fought twice last year. Not too good a move. Got to keep busy. Keep the tools sharp. That's right. It seems that uh, veteran fighters have a tendency to do that. It's the youngsters that keep busy. One minute remaining in the opening round here. Not much is happening. Rudy Battle, the veteran ref, 
Like Arthur McKinney, he's done many, many world title fights. Boom Boom Johnson, a technician. He takes his time, he's patient. He said he uses the scientific approach. And he's absolutely not willing, he also said, to relinquish the time. He fights every fight as if he's fighting for the title for the first time. That's the attitude you gotta have. Well, you have to have a good psychology, there's no doubt about it. Anyway, we're down to 10 seconds remaining here in round one of this championship bout. Round two. Round two, scheduled for 12, the IBF Featherweight Championship. In his sixth event, Tom Boom Boom Johnson from Detroit with a 37-2-1 record, 23 knockouts. And the challenger here, not a stranger, that's for sure. He held the title a long time ago, lost it to Johnson, and here they are in their third go at it. Manuel Medina, Tijuana, 49 and 5, 23 knockouts. <coughs> Joe Fariello, Johnson's trainer, was saying before the show tonight what he said uh, the best way he would describe Medina is awkwardly clever. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning of the round, he painted three jabs to the body. Google went for each pick. Instead of countering, I got to the first and second when he went for each pick. He's a tough fighter. Mexican fighters, uh, they can take punches. Anyway, here we are, round two. Six title defense. Uh, Johnson's first title defense was September 93 against Sugar Baby Rojas. He's a, he's, he's a very fine veteran fighter. Same year against Stefan Alcun in France. And uh, third was uh, Orlando Soto. And this past June here in Atlantic City, Bernie Antaro. And in October, another fine fighter, Pancho Segura. And his sixth defense here tonight. Medina, uh, and we've said this, buddy, that Johnson is a patient fighter. But Medina is uh, definitely on the offense here. Johnson scoring some points. Johnson's kind of tight. So you know, he hasn't got loose yet. He's kind of adjusting the loose drive. He's got, he's got a pretty good sweat to get loose. So he come out here and be ready to get in gear. Their last fight when Johnson took the title from Medina, he went the distance, but he had Medina down in the 11th round. And that must have been some punch. Medina, all business here. Wants that title back. Johnson, the older fighter. Overhand right. And we come down to the end of round two. Round three, scheduled for 12 in defense of his featherweight title. The man in the white trunks. Boom Boom Johnson. You know, buddy, when you look at their records, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, these guys have been after each other for a long time. <laughs> they first fought in November 91, that right. technical brawl where Medina kept the title. Then they didn't fight again until August 93, <laughs> and Medina lost the title. And here they are in January 95. These guys must be getting sick of each other, right? Eh? But when you only got, <laughs> when you got the two best. Do what you got to do. Johnson uh, is a very dedicated fighter. Medina certainly too, but Johnson is uh, the type of fighter that 
you know will always be prepared. Not one of these fighters that after a big bout takes time off and then gets back in the gym a couple of months before the next fight. It's like a Vander Holyfield. They stay in shape all year long. I know you do the same thing. Oh, too. Gotta, you have to. It makes it much easier when you go back. That's probably one thing to tell young fighters because they have a tendency to copy their, you know, their favorite. And if that person is an undisciplined, erratic uh, training schedule, they probably think, well, hey, you know, I'm just okay. And as you get older, you just can't do it. You know, the youngsters can get away with it. The oldsters can. Third round action. Johnson now. A little more aggressive. Still very stiff in the leg. Doesn't move much. Athena is definitely more active. Doubles the left. Keep in mind, these are very slick, quick fighters. The fighters, buddy, you have to watch very carefully. They could slip in and knock out punch so fast. Yeah. Here comes Johnson. You got him. Left hand. Off of Dina's jaw. Rudy Battle. Moving around the ring like a ballerina. Both men boxing. Medina using that in and out style. Johnson pretty much stationary. Missing. A couple of wild lefts. In the last 10 seconds of this third round. Number four, scheduled for 12 in this title defense for Tom Boom Boom Johnson, who also had, buddy, uh, one heck of a fine uh, amateur career. 140 wins and only 16 losses as an amateur. And then when he turned pro, he won his first 20 fights. He was in the top 10 back in 1990, and his first loss came in July of 1990 to Harold Warren. Fourth round action now. Medina seems to be sticking to the game plan. And if Johnson is uh, a patient man, He'll probably warm up a little bit more as yeah. time moves on here. Uh, he's finally cracked the sweat. Medina has been very busy. Fights with that mouth open with uh, the mouthpiece almost falling out. Obviously had some difficulty breathing through his nose after all these pugilistic wars. But sometimes the mouthpiece are real big, big and bulgy. So you get into the habit of always using it like that. Yeah, he really has his mouth wide open. Johnson just seems to uh, be content with uh, standing still and countering. Are you surprised by this, uh, buddy? Yeah, that's what normally he gets warmed up by now and, you know, starts getting it together. Manuel Medina. He's been a pro for 10 years. There comes Johnson now. Picking up the pace a bit with a minute left in this fourth round. You notice uh, every once in a while, Buddy, he uh, shakes his left arm. Is it maybe... Uh, he might have a little muscle spasm or something. Yeah, you notice that he wants some I think he's just doing that to try to get his distance. It's that boom, boom so? up. Yeah. I've seen fighters do that, though, and, and, and uh, many times it's been it's a slight like, pull. It's like pouring, pouring with it. I mean, I think of the times you fought with that shoulder injury. That uh, must have been extremely difficult. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Because that meant you had to fight one-handed all the way through. And we are in the last 10 seconds of round four. Round five. Round five. And 
it's been Medina basically crushing things here. And a very methodical Tom Johnson, the champion. This is the third time for these two guys. They've had this series going since 1991. There's Johnson now. More pressure. Warming up a little bit. And Medina has uh, changed very little here. He's the awkwardly clever, slick, in and out, tough fighter. And he moves in and out, hits and backs off. Johnson pretty much uh, doesn't show much movement or hasn't so far. Come on. The bit is very tricky. Puts from all angles and gives you a lot of head and body movement, which is not typical of a Mexican. That's a good point. The angles. He's got Boom Boom reaching for him. He does. And Boom Boom is uh, very stiff-legged. And so when he does reach out, he falls forward almost. Medina, very workmanlike, very busy. And you can watch the pattern. It, it, it's almost if you uh, were boxing him, you can almost figure out when he's going to move right. in, move out. I would think you could capitalize on that. The lunging Johnson. Dina taking control here in the fifth round. I think I think uh, Boom is trying to knock him out. He's trying too hard. He should just relax and let it flow. I think you're right. Good observation. Gonna throw one punch, no combination. <laughs> Last time they went the distance. There he is again. Same that snapping that elbow on his left arm. Who's that? Boom. Uh, no, the team. Every once in a while. You watch. He'll, uh, he'll, he does it a couple times. Uh, that wasn't one, but uh, I don't know whether he's bothered by muscle pull, spasm. I saw he would be jabbing like he is. Well, maybe that's why. Maybe that left arm's a little tired. He has been jabbing and, and uh, but he's so relaxed. Yeah, he is. <coughs> well, it's uh, Medina's round, I would think, in the closing 10 seconds of round five. Six coming your way. Tom Boom Boom Johnson defending his International Boxing Federation featherweight title against Manuel Medina from Tijuana, Mexico. 49 and 5. 23 knockouts. 23 knockouts also for Boom Boom. But Medina has kept his game plan intact here for the first five rounds. And Buddy McGirt said in the last round that possibly Johnson is trying for a knockout and he should back off and box more and get more of a feel for this fight. Put his combinations together. He's a good combination puncher. And Nina, meanwhile, with his mouth wide open and that mouthpiece uh, a little twisting and turning there. Fairly methodical fight. If you're a boxing purist, you're probably really into this fight. If you're a casual boxing viewer, you're probably waiting for somebody to uh, get knocked down, <laughs> unfortunately. Boxing in recent years has become so enamored with a knockdown, a knockout. Because you bring Mike Tyson and knocking everybody out. True. You know, buddy, next fall, next fall, I bet you Tyson fights and wins the WBA World Cup. I say he fights and wins the more. No, I mean his first, his first time. Next fall, what do you say? You can't believe that. Uh-huh.
Jody Poe is kind of the odd man out these days, but a uh, very talented guy. Every year he's got to be somebody, so unfortunately it was him this year, but he'll be back. In the last couple of years, uh, Medina fought three times in 93, and he was one and two. He lost to Tom Johnson, lost the title to Tom, and, and uh, he also lost to Juan Molina here in Atlantic City. And then fought twice last year. So his last fight coming in tonight was in September. Jose Martinez. Martinez, right? Let me correct that. And that was for the NHBF title. Closing seconds of round six. Round seven. We are halfway through this championship contest. And the champion in the white trunks, Tom Boom Boom Johnson. And the challenger who once held that title a few years ago, Manuel Medina, who has been very steady performer here tonight. And Johnson has been pretty much a one-punch fighter. Let's see if he puts some combinations together here, buddy. If he does that, we can all go home early. Really? Yeah. The prediction. I hope he does, because I want to beat the traffic. Well, I'm uh, still thinking about uh, maybe having you go up in the corner and tell him to box. <laughs> no, not this one. <laughs> He, uh, looking at his record the last couple of years, he, uh, they've all been, well, he won the title uh, in February, 93, from Medina, defended twice that year, and three fights last year, all title defenses. And he's, uh, what is it, 32 years old, I think. 30, is he 30 or 32? 32, I believe. Who's that? Bumble or 30, yeah. Now, unfortunately, in sports in this country, when you hit your 30s, everybody thinks you're over the hill. Hey, 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 hey. But uh, when you go over the hill, you get over the hill, you pick up speed. But the gentleman sitting next to me just had a birthday. I turned 19. I'm 19 years old. But he's uh, going strong. Your next fight, champ? Uh, hopefully in March. And you want that title back, right? Without a doubt. How badly do you miss a title when you're losing? It's like having peanut butter without jelly. Well said. In the last minute of round seven, Johnson somewhat on the offense a little bit more and needs to box. That's his specialty. Trying to go with that one punch. He's gotten in some left hooks. Now Medina reaching a little bit. Neither fighter seems to be bothered too much by exhaustion. They're both uh, fairly fresh in the last seconds here of round seven. Oh, no. Round eight. As time is slipping on here in a fight that has been very, very methodical in nature. Nothing real flashy. Neither fighter has been hurt. Medina has mostly been the aggressor moving in and out. Johnson needs to put more gloves together here in combinations. There he goes. He's been pretty much a one-punch fighter. And as Buddy McGurk said, if he starts doing that, this fight will be over. Quite frankly, I think it's going to go to distance. I hope not. I got money in the meter outside the parking meter. Picking up the pace a little bit here in round eight. Two minutes to go in this round. Rudy Battle, the veteran ref. Mark 
watching very closely when you have two championship fighters of this caliber with the quickness and the slickness that they do have you've got to watch them very very carefully simply because uh, either one of these fellows could come very very quick with a punch Rudy separates him. There he is again. Medina shaking that arm, but that's been a very busy left arm. Hey, just took a counter right. You see that? Oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't feel it, but I seen it. <laughs> Johnson now putting on some pressure. More lively. Says he doesn't care if he has to go to distance. There's no way he's going to relinquish the title. But I would say, uh, uh, buddy, we have a fairly close contest here. Oh, yeah. Who must do something if not? Medina's going to get his title back. This fight's going to come down to the last couple of rounds. And whoever looks good in those last couple of rounds is going to win it. True. Johnson. From Detroit, Michigan. He originally uh, came from Evansville, Indiana. Had a great pro career there. He is uh, he is now managed by Jackie Callen. And the last 10 seconds kick away here in round eight. Round nine, scheduled for 12. The champion's got to get cooking here, buddy. Oh, yeah. Who well, doesn't have no, no zip, it seems like, in his punches for some reason or another. What do you think, though, I mean, with, with uh, being 37, 2 and 1? I mean, here he is. He's in with a guy he fought twice before. Uh, it's been mostly a one-punch attack on his part. Wouldn't you think that now, here in the ninth round, he would say to himself, look, that, that's not working. I mean, I got to do something different here. Well, see, I got to box. I got to... The, the bad thing about boxing is if you're having a bad day, when things don't click, you can't call timeout. You can't sit in the second string. And you just can't sit it out. You got to sit there and do the best you can with what you got. If anybody who knows Boom Boom, they know it, that he, he has no zip. You know what I mean? He's just not Boom Boom. He's not himself. He just took a right hand to the cheek. From Medina. Well, Medina looks like he's on. He's been hustling all the way. He's been moving. Been the uh, aggressor. He's been doing everything. Yeah. I think your point is well taken. Uh, Johnson he does, does lack some zip. He doesn't have no, no, look at his legs. You know, he doesn't look like Boom Boom. He's just one of those when you have those bad days. Nothing you can do. I know about it, believe me. I've had a couple in my, in my career. Well, it happens in all of sport. But see, in boxing, you got to take the lick and keep on ticking. <laughs> That's right. As you said, so well, you, see, you can't take a time out. See, Sunday, if Steve Young has a bad day, they put in the second string. Right. And here we are in the ninth round with uh, about a minute to go. And the pattern. You have a bad day. It seems like you're fighting six guys at once. There's a headlock. There's Medina shaking that left arm again. And Johnson has really been very stiff throughout this fight. Very little, practically no bounce in his leg. Flat footed. No sting in the punches. Uh, he has a, a redness on the top of his nose, right between his eyes. Very definite redness from uh, all those jabs. Jab, right hand, hook, uppercut, backhand. That's another thing in boxing today. Fighters don't use that jab as much. 
It's the most important point in any fight is off of Round 10. And we'll say it again, folks. Johnson better get cooking here. What would you tell Johnson if he was in his corner, Dick? You know what I would tell him? I would say, look, forget about having a bad day. Just get out there. Step it up a notch. Move around. Shake it off. Get rolling. Because you can still win this one. But you only got a minute. You get to a in a minute, can you? Well, I, I could shorten it. I, <laughs> I, I could condense that down. A bit. What would you tell him? Same thing? Yeah, definitely. You just got to go out there and suck it up. Well, here we are. Round 10. Medina has uh, not changed one bit. His, uh, his style. In and out. You can almost tell when he, now he backs off. Comes in, range. Looks for the opening. Johnson missing. I mean, here's two guys that fighting for the third time. They, they uh, have seen everything about each other. But yet, I guess it's almost like the first time. Sometimes the third time can be worse because you don't know if the guy's going to do something different or he's going to do the same thing. Well, and that, uh, uh, from that standpoint, buddy, obviously Medina has the psychological edge. I mean, he, he is oh. coming in to, to win the title back, and he can let it ride. Well, that's the other guy's got nothing to lose. And Johnson, I think, has been somewhat cautious uh, early in this fight. I just think that, like I said earlier, Boomers have one of those days where he should have stayed in bed. But hopefully he'll come back and pull it off. Well, if he's going to pull it off, he's got to do it in his uh, last couple of rounds. I mean, we have a minute left in this one and six more minutes to go. So uh, he's got seven minutes to, uh, to do something different. Otherwise, I think he's, he's going to lose it. I'm not a psychic or anything, but I think so, too. I thought you were. No, I said, Dion Warwick called me a couple of times, but I don't want to be good. Middle of the ring now. And again, uh, a redness on the bridge of his nose, but uh, not a problem. Not a problem. Medina has fought uh, a smart fight. And I think he's starting to sense victory if he can keep it going and we're down to the last seconds of round 10 round 11 scheduled for 12 six more minutes of boxing at the most and it's been medina being very very uh patient I mean, patient from the standpoint, he, he's kept to his plan, he's not changed, he's moved in and out, he's moved to, and used the ring well. Johnson, on the other hand, has been lethargic at times, one punching, and he's trying, to, you notice what he's trying to, yeah. he's trying to pick it up now, but I, he just can't seem to do it. He's going to reserve tank. Yeah, I mean, here we are. This would be uh, this would be quite something if Medina grabs the title back because he number four. He uh, you know he held it in ninety one, no, lost go, it in ninety three. They go for the fourth meet. I know Johnson uh, wanted Kelly real bad, but he's lost. So maybe he was thinking too much ahead. My mother always told me, don't count the chickens before they hatch. Well, you know how it is in, 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 in sports. Uh, there, there is, when you're riding high, there's always the tendency to look ahead for the big money fight. And it is difficult. You know, if I say to you, buddy, don't look ahead, you're going to look ahead. Nah, because, you see, I've been there so many times, I know. Well, yeah, now as a veteran, yeah. Hey, no, a veteran. I'm not a veteran. You don't like that word. I'm just starting. Uh, I know. And you got that shoulder in good shape? Round 11 action. Medina moving. 
Johnson stumbling and shuffling around the ring. Definitely not the boom boom that has been so successful in five previous title defenses against some good people. And the crowd is uh, cheering on boom boom, but uh, he just can't seem to, to reach down here. He's reaching, but he just can't grab it. Yeah. A, a sneaky little choppy right hand from Medina. Medina is uh, definitely sensing victory here. He's, he's roughhousing a little bit and pushing and still moving. In fact, I think he's picked it up even a little bit. He went to overdraw. Yeah, he really has. He, he's dancing. He's up on his toes. Johnson now really looking bad. He's, he's lunging, shuffling, uh, trying desperately to... Now he's got to score at this point. I believe. Oh, definitely. I believe that's the case. I mean, they wanted him to box, and he did. And, and uh, that's the end of round 11, and we've got three more minutes of boxing, and I don't know. Uh, what do you think, buddy? You think it's Medina's fight? Without a doubt. I believe so. Let's uh, listen in. Okay. Side is sort of uh, agreeing that okay. Manuel Medina, Manuel Juan Medina, looks to be on the verge of recapturing the IBF featherweight title. The 10-year crawl. Trying to pick up his 50th victory. We're down to a minute. 30 battle separates him, and now the, uh, there is a slight cut on the nose of uh, Jackson, but certainly not a factor now. His time, I think, is coming gone in this fight. Lunging. Medina's got a bad cut now. His left eye, very bad. Blood streaming down his face, but. He only has 35 seconds to go, and perhaps he'll go back to Tijuana with a title. 25 seconds. Johnson trying desperately. That ground gradually slipping. That's a bad cut. Oh, Medina's left eye, uh, buddy. 
Oh yeah, most definitely. What he's, he's doing, what he has to do, he's moving, he's keeping busy. He fought a very steady fight. At the bell. And I would say that the former champion is once again a champion. I would say so. It's going to be an interesting decision. Adina certainly uh, uh, just maintained a very steady there he is in the ring. He, he has a the cut man working on him. You can see that. See that cut right up there on his eyebrow. Possibly some scar tissue might have split open. And the cut man with uh, some very interesting uh, stickers on his bald pate. And Boom Boom Johnson. Yeah, there you go. What is that? I believe that's the, uh, is that the Italian emblem, I think, on his head? Oh, it's the Mexico. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Anyway, there he is, and I do believe, ladies and gentlemen, he has regained the title, and I would say that that is quite an accomplishment. The fellow who, <coughs> excuse me, the fellow who's uh, not had that title for a while comes in here with his... And we're about ready to have the decision. Here's Ed Darien. From Valley's Park Place here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, I've got the scoring, and here it is. Judges Frank Brunette and John Stewart each score 116-112, while Judge Al DeVito, he observed 115-113. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and still the idea, the late champion of the world, Tom Boom Boom Johnson. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now let's have a... What do you think, buddy? What do you think? Your thoughts. I got nothing to say. I got nothing to say at all. Well, I'll tell you, I've seen a lot of boxing over the years, 26 years worth, and... Uh, I really thought Medina had the edge. Anyway, uh, the man who lost the title some time ago has regained it, and in the process, he has picked up his 50th win, or uh, he, he has picked up his 38th win in his sixth title defense. Boom, boom, Johnson, there he is. Uh, and, uh, and the challenger did a heck of a job. Manuel Medina, and this is Dick Landis, and I want to thank James Buddy McGirt. We hope you've enjoyed the show from Atlantic City.